sure. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Okay, I start the recording now. Recording okay. in progress. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ho Chen, and I'm a postdoc, postdoc researcher at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. So, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me uh, to give this presentation, and uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. So, today the title of my talk is The Open Quantum System Toolkit for Hamiltonian Quantum Computing. And this talk will be structured around the work I did during my PhD at USC under, uh, with my supervisor, Daniel Guitar. So I will mainly focus on this box, the software package, uh, which we published to simulate open quantum system dynamics. So the software package itself is completely open source, so you can find it uh, in this GitHub repo. So I'd like to divide my talk into five sections. First, I'd like to give a brief review of the theory of open quantum system. And then I'd like to introduce our software, Hox, and show how it can help us as scientists and researchers working in this field by presenting some applications where Hox was used as numerical tools. Finally, if time permit, I'd like to discuss some future development of Hox. So let's get started. Of course, the theory of open quantum system is a large theory, rich field with a lot of active research. So I cannot possibly cover all of them during this brief review. So my goal of this review is to convince you that first, we should care about the theory of open quantum system in AQC or in quantum computing in general. Second, Besides those empirical fitted model used by the gate-based community, we should also care about the first principle approaches for the open quantum system. And finally, a software package like Cox is indeed a good idea. So I'd like to start with the last by doing a brief survey of all the available open quantum system methods. So of course, the theory of open quantum system studies the property of a small quantum system in contact with the large environment. And in this talk, I will mainly focus on the open system dynamics because this is arguably one of the most important things with respect to quantum engineering. So here, this is the general setup. Uh, and how do we proceed from here? So the standard approach is to write down a formal equation of the reduced system dynamics by somehow separate the equation of motion into a system part and the best part. So unfortunately, solving those formal equation is usually as hard as solving the original problem. So at this point, we need to start making approximation if one, we want to proceed. So the first set of approximations we can make is we can apply some formal expansion to the equation. For example, if we apply the high convolutionist expansion or the TCL expansion to the Nakajima Renzi equation, we end up with the TCL master equation. So we can do similar things here and we will end up with this generalized hierarchical equation of motion. So those formal expansions provide us a systematic way to approach the open system dynamics. However, without further approximation, those equations are still challenging to solve, and they usually lack real response on the range of applicability. So from this point, it's safe to say now the game becomes a trade-off between approximation we will make and the computational cost of solving the model. So for example, if we assume the best is Gaussian, then our life could be immediately simplified. We would say some of the most familiar names uh, in this list. For example, if we make uh, the Markovian approximation with a Gaussian mass of the second order TCL master equation, we have our beloved Redfield equation. 
So we can keep going to the right of this chart by making more and more approximation. There will be a lot of tools in the literature and here I list a few of them. So here I'd like to point out two methods. First, the adiabatic master equation, AME, and the non-interaction bleep approximation, NIBA. So those two are probably two of the most well-known open system models used to study the dynamics uh, in the D-wave quantum network. So of course, my goal of the previous slide is not to confuse you with all the four liter or five liter abbreviations. So hopefully by showing you all those available open quantum system methods, you could agree with me that the challenge of putting the open quantum system theory into practice, uh, many of those methods are tailored for specific models and adapting them to different scenarios is very hard. And testing those models would become a tedious process of trial and error. Besides, scaling up the computation of various open system models is a challenge in itself. So with this now, if we have a software package that let users play with different open system models and different systems, physical system, that would greatly help us to address those challenges. So now I would assume that every one of you is com convinced that talks do sound like a good idea. So then why should we care about the first principle approaches instead of using the fitted model as what people are doing in the gate-based community? So there are two angles to answer this question. First, the QA, is in, the QA devices are actually described by the first principle model. The intuition is because the QA is basically a continuous time process, and there usually exists a small gap region during the new, which is more somehow more important than other places. So those features make it hard to find a fitting model that could capture the underlying physics. So here I listed some of the previous works uh, where people study the open system dynamics from the first principle model on the D-Wave machine. So, and I'd also like to point out those two papers where AME and NIBA were first used. And hopefully by the end of the presentation, uh, I could also convince you that there is another good model for this, which is the Polaron transform red field equation. Besides the D-Wave platform, Researchers have also tested those first principle models on other platforms, for example, the flux qubit, and great agreement between the experiment and theory are report, were reported. So from the other angle is to say some hardness, some challenges of applying those fitted models. So usually to find a fitted limbo master equation general cross map, there needs to be a completed learning procedure with some local and sparse assumption. So usually those learned model would depend on the system Hamiltonian. So if we change the system Hamiltonian, we would usually need to relearn the model, or we can only take, think about the average case. So this is highly undesirable in practice. On the other hand, by design, the first principle model would allow us to describe the noise with smallest number of free parameters, and the noise model is independent from the system. So finally, why should we care about the theory of quantum system in quantum engineering? So this is relatively easy to answer. So, um, so the first thing on one hand, we know that open system is the source of decoherence. So if there is too much decoherence, our system becomes classical and we may lose any potential for quantum speed up. With this reason, so the researchers in the field have been rigorously benchmark the experiment data against open quantum system models and classical models in search for unique quantum signatures. So on the other hand, people also argue that maybe the thermal effect could help us in quantum knitting by helping the system to reach the thermal uh, ground state faster. 
with serialization. So in, there are two examples in this line of research. One is a summary assisted turning, and another is this mean annealing gap protocol. So hopefully at this point, everyone agree with me that um, Hox is actually a good idea and open quantum theory of open quantum system is important. So now I'd like to change the gear a little bit um, by introduce Hox from the point of view of software. So as mentioned before, this is an open source package which is hosted in this public available GitHub repo, and this can also be directly installed using the Julia package manager as open component tool. So this is our humble first step of the grand goal we I just described. So our goal is of course to provide as many tools as many as possible open component system tool to the user, and should it, the package should be user friendly without compromising performance. So, to achieve this, we adopted this three layer design of Hawks. So, there is this user, face, user interface layer where people specify different objects in the open quantum system description, like the bash, the system bash interaction, and the Hamiltonian. So, this package will describe, store those things as intermediate representation. Only when the server is called, the package will convert those intermediate representation to some more hardware friendly description and feed it to the low level routine. For example, an ODE driver in this case. And uh, of course, when I begin, began to work on Hawks, our main competitor on the market uh, is the Q-tip. Right, so here I list a comparison chart of the so supported server type between Hawks and Q-tip. As we can see here, the advantage of Hawks is that it supports some of the newly developed master equation type, which are uh, believed to be, will be useful in quantum engineering or elevated quantum computing. So finally, at the end of the second section, um, I'd like to present some benchmarking result of Hox. So for the purpose of benchmarking, um, I'm cons we're considering simulate the annealing problem with um, annealing process with this alternating sector chain problem. So this problem was first introduced in this paper as a toy model to search for any quantum signature. So at this point of this talk, I would assume everyone is familiar with quantum annealing. So basically the setup is that we have a problem Hamiltonian specified as an alternating sector chain. And uh, this Hamiltonian can be transformed into a free fermion Hamiltonian. So it's analytically solvable. Uh, so, but for the benchmarking purpose, we solve the annealing process using the adiabatic master equation um, using both Q-tip and Hox and report the runtime in the figure on the right. So in this figure, the x-axis is the dimension of the system we simulate and the y-axis is the runtime. So, and we can already see here um, that for this time dependent open system problem, Hawks already achieved order of magnitude comparing with QT. So of course, um, it's necessary to do more benchmarking on other methods of Hawks and uh, we are still working on this and set up a dedicated benchmark repo. So now here is our third section where I would like to showcase how Hox can help us as scientists and researchers in this field uh, by present some project where Hox was used as numerical tools. So for the first set of examples, I would like to put them in the category as the stronger, strong versus weak upper limit in quantum engineering. So the methodology of those researchers is to compare the data from real world devices 
with two different open quantum system models. One is our beloved adiabatic Poisson equation. The other is something called the Polaron transform rate field equation, or the PTRE. So basically, this equation, PTRE, is the red field equation we derived in the Polaron frame. So the Polaron frame is generated by this unitary. So the nice feature of PTRE is that it works in the opposite limit of AME. So if we consider this line as uh, a system that's coupling strings, AME actually works in the weak coupling limit where we treat the system bath have interacting Hamiltonian as a perturbation, and the summarization happens in the eigenbasis of the Hamiltonian. So the PDRE, everything is actually happens in a rotated basis. So in the strongest limit of PDRE, we have basically the Niva limit where we treat for the single qubit example, we treat this uh, transverse field strings as perturbation, and the symbolization would happen in the local basis or the computational basis. So by comparing the real world data with those two different models, we observe that there is a signature of strong coupling limit in real world quantum device. So the first uh, experiment is the Turner spectroscopy experiment. That experiment was proposed by scientists at D-Wave as a way to prove entanglement during the new. So the main idea of the experiment is instead of the common system qubits for a new, we attach a probe qubit to it, to them. So the probe qubit somehow split the energy of the system into two different sectors. And uh, we can align the ground state of sector one to any state of sector zero by change the string, local field strength of the probe qubit. So then if we turn on the transverse field, we would expect that the tunneling would happen between the two sectors, and then we can plot the tunneling rate between the two sectors with respect to how we align the ground state with other energy state. So the experiment result was reported in this figure as a star shape curve. So a following up study on this problem, the author used the AME to study this process. So one mystery at that time was AME fails to capture this lightweight bottling of the tunneling rate peak. And people tried really hard, and, and uh, it seems that AME did could not capture this feature. So with Hox, actually, I can test this with different type of open system models and see how they compare with the experiment data. So what I tested includes two flavors of adiabatic cluster equation and also the polaron transformed red field equation with different PTRE achieves the best agreement between the experiment data uh, and the theory. And also it's correctly captured the lightweight sporting fe feature of the experiment data. So this is the first experiment. And then let's talk about the second experiment, uh, which was reported in this newly published paper, uh, which is the breakdown of the weak coupling limit in quantum annealing. So of course, there are more results in this paper than what I listed here. So my goal here is to present the part where Fox is relevant as a showcase and why presenting the main idea of those papers. So here in this paper, we actually simulate a reverse annealing algorithm with P equals two P speed model. So the P speed model is defined by this Hamiltonian. The nice thing about this Hamiltonian is there, it has two degenerate ground state. 
So let's think of <coughs> sorry. Let's think of a reverse annealing problem. So if we start from the bond state of the classical Hamiltonian and reverse back to some point uh, of the annealing procedure and uh, return to the classical Hamiltonian. If we think about this process, if our system is really in the weak copper limit and the summarization is happening between the energy eigenstate, then we would expect that at the end of the experiment, the population of those two degenerate eigenstates should be the same. This is also the prediction given by AME, where the x axis is the reversion point, meaning how deep we go uh, for this reverse annealing problem, and the y axis uh, is the total success probability, and um, the inside of the population of the two degenerate ground states. So as we can say that AME would predict that those two degenerate ground states would have the same population. However, this is not true in the experiment. So with D-wave data, we observe a split between the two degenerate uh, ground state with some range of the reverse choices of the reverse point. And this feature can actually be correctly captured by the PTRE simulation, where the summarization actually happens in the local or computational basis in, instead of the edge eigen basis. So this result suggests that in the current configuration of D-Wave, it might work in the regime of the strong coupling limit. So maybe it's worth to invest in on the regime for maybe smaller annealing time or the regime of more coherent annealing. So then there is this final project. Actually, the, this project was also presented in this conference on Tuesday. So I will just briefly go over this project again. And this project is led by Xi and Robin from University of Waterloo with collaborators from USC, NGC, and Link MIT Lincoln Lab. So the idea of this project is we have this new device, flux qubit device made for quantum annealing. And uh, the good thing about this flux qubit is that it offers more control. So we use the flux qubit to perform the landau Wiener um, experiment. So then the nice thing is that the minimum gap of this lambda Wiener experiment can be tuned by control the X flux on this flux loop. So, and also, of course, we can think uh, about this lambda Wiener problem as a toy model for quantum annealing. So, think about we start at the ground state of the Hamiltonian and we slip across the and avoid level crossing, and we measure the population measurement were reported in the leftmost panel. So this, the, the x-axis is the dimension is time of this Landau linear split, and the y-axis is the population of the one stage at the end of the experiment. So the nice feature of this experiment is that if we look at how the curve changes when we tune the X flux and in, as a result tuning the gap. So when the gap is large, the experiment curve looks a lot more similar with, to the AME simulation result. And when we turn down the gap, make the gap smaller, the experiment curve become more similar to the PTRE result. This suggests that we actually, by turning, rescaling the Hamiltonian, we can actually observe the transition from the strong to weak copper limit on hardware. So, and another interesting feature is that if we look at its turning rate, the turning rate actually in the strong copper limit is 
more closer to the coherent ternary limit than the weak coupling limit. So this is the argument people used to argue that several thermally assisted quantum ternary would actually help us. So then after the first three projects, I, I would like to change the gear a little bit and present some user, use case of course outside the field of quantum engineering. So, and hopefully this would still be interesting enough for the, my audience here today. So for the, this first project, we, instead of the DWIP, we actually try to simulate the open quantum system dynamics on an IBM quantum device. So the idea is that in a typical idea IBM quantum computer, we pick some qubit as a main qubit and we refer the rest of the qubit and the spectator qubit. And what we did was to keep applying dynamical coupling sequence on those spectator, spectator qubit um, and uh, measure or observe the dynamics of the main, main qubit. So the goal of this experiment is to demonstrate that dynamic decoupling can help us suppress the daily crosstalk on the device. So, and the result were reported in this paper. Um, besides that, there are a lot more interesting results here and um, readers could refer to our paper for more detailed discussion. But here, what I'd like to show is the experiment result and the simulation results from Holt. So what we did was to plot the fidelity of the main qubit with different choices of the initial state of the spectator qubit with and without dynamic decoupling sequences. And we can see our simulation without any experiment achieves very good qualitative agreement. So we can also go one step further by asking how far we can push the limit of those first principle open quantum system models um, the first principle open quantum system models um, by making a more detailed um, construction of the open quantum system model. So in a follow-up study, we instead of, we make the following adjustment. Instead of those toy two-level models, we use the transmog circuit Hamiltonian in our description and we use the drag process instead of the instantaneous gate, and we choose the system best interacting Hamiltonian as the following. So um, for the system best interacting Hamiltonian, we couple a bath to the charge operator of the transmog circuit. Um, we call it the X bath, and we couple Z bath to the current operator of the transmog circuit. And also we add a stochastic noise, telegraph noise to the charge operator of the uh, transmog qubit to model the one over noise in this process. And we have a three-step procedure to calibrate this noise model. So first, we calibrate the noise path model of this X path by using T1 data. And, and then, we can ca calibrate the best along the axis by using the data after we apply the DD, where DD is supposed to, to figure out all the snow noise in this process. And finally, we use the entire data set to capture those one over F noise model. And with the calibration procedure, then what we did is to predict the dynamics of this transform circuit with different initial state and on both free evolution and DD evolution. So the result of this work was reported on those two figures where we report the relative error of our prediction and total evolution time. So here the evolution time is reported as the number of gates so as we can see, by using this first principle model, 
we can achieve a relatively good, um, we can achieve good relative error um, to in predicting the dynamics of the transmog circuit. So finally, since we, I, I since I'm a little bit ahead of my schedule, so I'd like to talk about some future development of hope. So here, um, the question I would like to ask, uh, answer is, can we simulate the open quantum system dynamics using a compressed format representation? So what is, um, so it, it seems that I have a question. So I, I will try to answer the question in the Q&A section. So sorry for this. And uh, so, give me a second, it seems the Zoom stopped working. Oh, okay, it's working. So, so the compressed format is what used in the community of mathematicians as a way to find a compact format of tensor network for things like data compression and uh, um, machine learning. So, and the one well-known compressed format is the tensor chain, or maybe also known as matrix product state or matrix product operator by physicists. So what's interesting is that mathematicians have been doing this for a long time where they know how we can do a matrix vector product using those com compressed format. So if we look at um, how we would solve an, let's say, adiabatic master equation uh, as an algorithm, we would realize that every step in this algorithm, what we really did were doing matrix vector product or matrix matrix product. So the interesting question to ask is of course, um, whether we can replace everything here in this algorithm with compressed format and thus scale up our simulation capability of opponent system algorithm. So um, this here, we have some preliminary result um, what we did was we replaced those two steps with the compressed tensor chain format. So we would describe our density matrix and Hamiltonian in tensor chain format. And also we would change our eigen decomposition routine with density frame uh, matrix with tensor chain format. And we use the density matrix renormalization group and the locally optimal flow precondition conjugate gradient method for this eigenvalue decomposition. And by doing this, we can actually scale up um, the Davis master equation solver. So here I reported some of the preliminary results we have where we compare our TT-based solver with the exact, exact solution. So as we can see, um, the result matched um, greatly even though we are making a lot of more approximation here by using the tensor chain format. So lastly, um, is my conclusion. So in this talk, I reviewed the theory of open quantum system with a focus on quantum annealing, and I presented our open source Julia package, the Hox, and I illustrated the usage of Hox by demonstration, uh, demonstrating applications of Hox in both QA and gate-based quantum computing. So um, that concludes my talk and uh, thanks for listening. And if you have any questions, I would like, I'm happy to answer them. So um, I think there is uh, some question on the chat. So let me read it. Um, Okay, so the question is, could you explain why NIBA approximation is enough to account for the coherence effect in the intermediate coupling region? It is usually a good approximation only for limited range of coupling strength. So this is true. So, and actually what you said is true. So 
Now, I think you are referring to this slide. So what I'm saying is that Neva actually can only work in the stone company with where uh, the sterility uh, is created at the perturbation parameter. Um, the intermediate coupling region, what where how it, what can work is the polaron transform red field equation. Um, you can think of it as an extension of NIBA. So there are a lot of free parameters you can tune in PDRE. So in one case, if we choose our bath to be omic, and we if we choose this system or a rotation unitary to be an identity. So in those limits, this could recover NIVA. Um, so it works in the strong couple limit. So, but in general, PGRE has a larger range of applicability than NIVA. And hopefully this answers your question. Yes, any other question? Could you clarify on slide 27, 28, uh, you uh, described uh, the tensor train. So what was the topology of the system? Oh, so here I'm doing an annealing experiment with the alternating sector chain problem. So the topology is described here. So it's an annealing problem with this 1D chain so in principle, we would expect that uh, the tensor train works. However, we did try a lot of other problems. We tried the tunneling gadget problem uh, um, proposed by Google and uh, a bunch of others. And it seems that uh, the tensor train format works really well. So, and I think the general philosophy here is to, at least for me, to treat this tensor train format as a mathematical decomposition data compression techniques instead of starting from any physical in, uh, intuition. Um, so this maybe, I mean, we can try other possible uh, tensor decomposition algorithm instead of a tensor train, and maybe we can expand the similar for uh, system to other physical configuration. Okay, well, um... Hi. Uh, quickly share the uh, GitHub page so people can see what, what they need to do to download Hawks. Uh, part of the, the goal of this talk was to provide people um, um, uh, access this, uh, this program, which uh, we think is uh, a nice complement to, to Q-tip and as Apo showed in some cases actually seems to be faster than Q-tip. So, could you give people a, a quick uh, pointer there? Yes, give me a second. Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Actually, I have a quick question so, about that. Is it faster sorry. because you use Julia? Sorry, what did you Is say? it faster than Qt because you are using Julia compared to Python? Yeah, that's part of the reason. And uh, another reason is um, I'm using one of the best uh, low-level uh, ODE solvers, um, which is also written in Julia. And there are a bunch of professional mathematicians keep remaining, uh, maintaining those ODE solvers. So that ODE solver is also potentially much faster than what people use in Python. So here, I mean, uh, this is the GitHub page of the hoax. So, and uh, you can see, um, here is a readme file, and it describes how you can install uh, hooks. So it's actually um, very easy. So you just install Julia and you open Julia, and run those two lines of code, it will automatically everything for you, uh, install everything for you. So the, yeah, the address of this is, of course, um, the open corner tools. Um, so the name is different than Hawks because we want to conform with the Julia package name guidelines. All right, let's thank the speaker again.